In order for you to see how the gluten hams, quads, and calves produce torque, you're going to need to look at them from an entirely different perspective because if you only view them this way from the side, it's going to be very difficult for you to break free from the mindset that all they do is push the body forward. So this new angle we're going to observe them will be from above the athlete, as if we're looking down at the top of their head in the direction of this arrow as shown. And since I don't have the overhead shot of our athlete running here, I am going to show you an overhead view of another athlete with his arms and legs in similar positions. And then I'll use both images or perspectives to help me explain things better. So let's slide her over to the left and let's drop in the other athlete over here to the right. Okay, looking at these two pictures side by side, we see both athletes have their right legs behind them, both have their right arms in front of them, both have their left arms behind them, and both have their left legs in front of them, except that while our female athlete's left leg is in the air, our male athlete has his touching the ground, which was needed simply for balance during the taking of this photo. Next, I'm going to play some lines and graphics on these images. Starting with our female athlete on the left, this line represents the midline of her body. This line up top represents where the arms attach out at the shoulder joints. And this line down at the bottom represents where the legs attach out at the hip joints. Now, before drawing on our male athlete, I'm going to need to first back him up a bit and put him in a more neutral position like this. And I will tell you why when I'm done. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is start building what looks to be the face of a clock around him, starting with the placement of the dial like this. And this will help me explain the concept of torque or rotational force in a manner that should be a little more familiar to you. Next, I'm going to place a vertical line over him from the 12 o'clock position down to the six o'clock position. This one line could represent the hour and minute hands of this clock, but for now, what it really represents is actually two separate lines seen on our female athlete, those being her shoulder line and her hip line. Except when we look down at them from above in our male athlete in this neutral position, his shoulder line becomes superimposed upon his hip line. Therefore, the two lines become one. And as we go forward, I will make sure I designate which line this represents at the appropriate time. And the last thing I'm going to do to this image for now is place a circle in the middle. And it could represent the central axis or pivot point where the hour and minute hands rotate around if this were a clock. However, this circle will serve as a marker for where the center or midline of his body lies underneath. And it also corresponds to the midline on our female athlete. Okay, so now that we have everything drawn, let's go ahead and put him back into his original position. The one that closely matched up with our female track athlete like this. And as we do, you will see his body rotate or shift a little, which is a part of this torque or rotational force taking place around his body that we are going to discuss in great detail here. And so it is to be expected. Now, the reason I chose to draw on him in the neutral position, again, this one here, instead of this one, was because I wanted to show you where the shoulders and hips were at using only one line. Because if I were to draw on him now, after there's been some rotation, those two wouldn't line up anymore and it would force me to draw them separately. And all that would do is clutter my image, making things a little more difficult to present. So again, as we go forward, I will make sure I designate which line we are referring to at the appropriate time. All right, that's going to do it for this video. You can access the link to the next part in this series, as well as all 12 parts in the description below. Now, before I go, I want to say that if you liked my video, then please click the like button. Feel free to share it wherever you want and leave me a question or comment as I'll be sure to get to it as soon as possible. Also, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to this channel and follow Athletic Quickness on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter to stay up to date on all of our speed training tips, articles, and exercises. Okay, that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.